So I devote this channel for the motor control. After completing this chapter, you will be able to run the motor and also control the speed of it. So for that purpose, first we uh, cover some motor fundamentals and some um, theoretical topics, just, just very quickly. Then we will use our STM32 microcontroller to generate a pulse with modulation signal, PWM signal. And then we will use timer update interrupt to, to run our code periodically. So that's what we are going to do next. So let's start from the motor fundamentals. So the first thing is the motor types. And of course, there, there are a lot of uh, different kind of motors in the market in general. And here I, uh, I'm showing three most popular, in my, in my opinion, the, the motor types. First is the brushed DC motor. Um, they are mostly used in small robotic applications. They are they're e really easy to drive, easy to, to work with them, but they also have disadvantages. I will, I will tell them uh, later. Next, we have uh, brushless DC motors or um, PMSM, um, permanent magnet synchronous motors. They are mostly used in drones nowadays because they are very efficient uh, also, they're very durable, but they require special uh, special hardware, electronic speed controller, ESC. But since our uh, but uh, since our um, objective is to work with the with the flight controller, uh, I decided to use a DC motor in, in my in my case because um, it's it's very easy to handle. But later I might add another chapter to, to cover BLDC motors as well. But uh, for the sake of simplicity, in this course, I will be mainly using the DC motor. And again, if you're using BLDC, if you have electronic speed controller, you, you're also welcome. I will, I will, I will help you to, to set up the hardware as well. Next, we have also stepper motors, but they're mostly used in CMC machines, in 3D printers, when high position um, precision is required. So let's go. Um, so next, let's go over the the brush DC motor, like the internal structure, how it works. So basically, in brush DC motors, we have a magnets as a, as a stator, so it creates a magnetic field. Then we have a windings, and when we apply the voltage to the windings, they create also magnetic field. And these two magnetic fields interact with each other. And because of that, we have a torque and the rotor will start rotating. And of course, on the web, there are plenty of materials about DC motors with the, with the illustrations, with everything. So I guess it's redundant to explain all of that. The great thing about the DC motors is that we can apply just the voltage like DC motor and the motor will start will start spinning. It is because of these brushes which always uh, connects which which is which are always in contact with the with the commutator. So because of this very um, clever mechanical structure we can apply the DC motor to drive to drive the motor. But this disadvantage is but this advantage is also disadvantage for in, in DC motors because because of these brushes we have some internal resistance and that's why we have some additional power loss. In addition, if you use a lot, this commutator will eat up the brushes so you will know you will you won't have any co connection. So you won't have any connection so you will not be able to drive the motor. So because of that reasons, in, in, in drones, we usually find BLDC motors. Another important thing is, is driving the motor. If we take the motor and uh, connect the, the, the motor directly to the microcontroller, probably we can spin, but the microcontroller cannot provide enough current, so, so the motor cannot generate enough torque. So that's why we have MOSFETs. So the MOSFETs can provide enough 
enough current and the, the microcontroller pin will just control the gate so we can open or close the, the current flow. So this way we can generate enough current and at the same time we can control uh, the, the flow of the current. So that's why in our board we have four MOSFETs to, to drive four motors and they are connected to these pins PB6789. And our next thing is to generate signals to drive the MOSFETs in those pins. Another important thing is controlling the speed of the motor. So when we work with the motor, we don't want to just uh, turn off the motor or reach the highest possible speed, but instead we want to control the speed, something we want to get something intermediary. And for that purpose, usually we have a PWM signal, pulse width modulation. It's a powerful technique to generate analog signal using a digital one. So this is how it works. So this uh, picture shows the, the, the shape of the signal. So it's a periodic, so it has a period. Another important parameter is, is the G2 cycle. So we can vary this G2 cycle in real time. So if we set it to 50%, so if this high state is half of the period, we can deliver 50% uh, of the maximum power we can deliver. If we set it 20, we have 20% power. If we have 80, we have 80%. So in real time, we will vary this G2 cycle. And because of that, we can adjust the speed of the motor. That's very crucial to, to balance the, the drone. So that's uh, all the theoretical topics I want to cover. And of course, if you have any questions, you can leave in the discussion section. And also I might put some additional materials um, in the description so you can get more information about, about the topics we covered. So next thing, finally, we can start programming and we will create a project and we will generate a PWM signal and we will see the result immediately. So see you soon.